Hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Simulate Tabletop in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I've been told there's there's quite a few people out there, and, and I know why. This is a um, fantastic tool uh, for prototyping in, uh, in the era of social distancing, but boy, is that a high learning curve. Um, I like to say Tabletop Simulator is like your favorite game. Uh, it's real easy once you know the rules. Uh, so uh, let's jump right into it. I know there's a lot to go through. Um, the aim of this is just to teach you sort of the basics uh, of how to do, you know, like importing custom cards and, and boards and things like that, just to get your prototype on the digital table uh, so that you can play test it right away. Uh, advanced stuff like scripting or 3D models, we're not going to really cover that. Um, we're just going to cover the basics. And I know that's, that's plenty for most people. Uh, but if you are interested in learning more, they have a a pretty good website for it, and I'll show you how to get to that uh, during this talk. Um, all right, great. So let's get started. Uh, you've loaded up Steam, you've bought Tabletop Simulator, you loaded it up. This is what you're going to see uh, right at the get-go. Um, this is the home menu, uh, and you've got a few options here. You've got Join and Create, and you've got this middle row of icons. Uh, first things first, <laughs> let's go to configuration real quick. Um, now, you're not going to hear it on my end uh, because I've turned it all the way down, but the default is to have this really sort of annoying menu music. Um, a lot of people want to know how to change that right away. Just go to sound, drag that all the way to the bottom. Okay, you'll never hear it again. Uh, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, fantastic. All right, so now that's out of the way. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, how to start creating games. All right, so we're going to go to create, um, pretty self explanatory. Uh, and then you've got a few different options here. You've got single player, multiplayer, and hot seat. Um, single player is where you're going to be do most of your tinkering as you're designing and putting stuff into the program. Multiplayer is uh, what you're going to join uh, when you want to play test with people online. Okay. Um, so for right now, we're just going to create a single player server. All right. So we'll click on that. Uh, this default menu is going to come up, the games menu. Uh, and then you see it's going to choose a random table and a random background for you. So this is a lovely hex table in the forest. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about what we want to uh, do exactly here. Um, like I said, it's going to load you up a random table. So you're going to want to choose something uh, that's going to fit your needs, uh, how, whatever size your game is. Uh, the square table here, uh, this is great for four players. Um, this has got four seats already in it. Um, you can see here the different player colors. Uh, and then you have a uh, black and gray. Um, if you're going to take a seat at the table, if you're playtesting, you're going to want to sit at one of these colors on the side, and you'll have your name there. Uh, however, if you want to see um, everything and have total control, uh, right, you're the designer, if you want to manipulate stuff, uh, you're going to join that black seat. That's going to be the game master. Uh, so you don't actually have a seat or a hand of cards or anything. This is just you sort of overseeing the world. Um, and then gray is going to be a spectator. That'll be for players joining your game that aren't playing, but they want to see how it works, something like that. Uh, but for the purposes of prototyping, it, uh, for the most part, doesn't quite matter what you choose uh, because you have the same powers no matter what since you started this game here. Um, all right. So let's go to the games menu and see what Tabletop Simulator has to work with. Um, they already have some preloaded stuff. Um, so if you're going to make a variant of chess, congratulations, you don't have to build that from scratch. Uh, you can just go to the chessboard, uh, and there you go. You can work on chess all you want. <laughs> uh, they have a bunch of other classic games um, and all that stuff. They even have some sort of kits uh, of things you might, might want in your game, like uh, dice here. Um, now, that you're able to get this uh, in a completely different way, uh, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but let's just start with the blank table. I've loaded up. Uh, sort of the demo table here. Just sort of a blank rectangle table with a blurry background that is not distracting. Um, and this table here has uh, eight players around it. Okay, so it's a nice big table uh, for those big player games. <clears throat> so uh, let's import some objects right away. We're just going to uh, start creating games, and I'll show you how to, uh, how to import the different types of objects and what you need to do. So the first thing you're going to go, you're going to go to this objects menu, right? You have a few options here, tables and backgrounds. We've already sort of explored a little bit. Uh, you're going to go up to components, okay? Um, Tabletop Simulator has a lot of pre-made components already. So you've got 
some blocks here. You know, if you need a red square, some rectangles, some triangles, um, little cubes, things like that, um, they've got it right there for you. You don't have to custom create them. A um, couple of boards for you. Uh, if you need just a simple grid, uh, you've got the checkers board or go reverse things like that. Uh, you could just import those right away. Um, if you're going to just play with a standard deck of cards, they've already got that. It's right there for you. Um, let's see, there's other pieces here, but really what you want to do is you're going to go to custom, right? You're uploading your own prototype. Uh, and presumably you've got um, cards made up and art made up for all that. Uh, you're going to go here. Um, let's talk about uh, your board, your main board. I'm going to just delete these. Great. Uh, <laughs> there's two options for doing a board. Um, the first one is obvious. It's called board. Uh, so you'll click on that. You'll left click here. Um, to set down the board you want. Now you'll notice that I can now make another board if I wanted to. Uh, this is sort of the clone tool, it's a default. Uh, if you wanted to make multiple copies of something right away, you can do that without having to do it uh, you know, five times for five of the same pieces. You just do it once. Uh, but for the board, we only need one, so I'm gonna right click out of that. Uh, and then it's gonna ask for your image. Uh, what's your board image, right? Uh, and there's a certain uh, type of file that it will accept. Uh, so I've got some uh, already set up here. Uh, so we're going to go to this game and uh, load it up. Now, anytime you load an asset like this, uh, an image, uh, into Tabletop Simulator, it's going to give you two options, um, cloud upload or local upload. Uh, and you'll see in that dialog here, to actually play with other people, you have to upload it to the cloud. If you just do a local upload, you'll see there's just the normal you know, Windows file directory uh, right there. Um, and if I load that in, uh, it'll show up, but if I try to play this with somebody, they're not going to have access to that, right? So what you want to do uh, is change that to uh, to cloud. Uh, now, TTS, I think, has 100 gigabytes of cloud space for you, so you're not going to run out anytime soon. Uh, so you go ahead, uh, upload that. It's going to scroll. There you go. Perfect. And then import. You'll see it's the same image as before because it's the same image location. Uh, but because now it's a cloud upload, uh, everybody will be able to see it. It'll load on their computer when they join your stream. So it's very important. If you don't do that, they're going to see a bunch of blank images and it won't be playable. Um, OK, fantastic. So you've got your board out here. Um, here's the sort of weird features of board. Uh, there had this black, uh, sort of brown border around it. Uh, sort of raised up, right? You can kind of see that 3D rendering there. Um, this is the default, you can't get rid of that. So if you want your board to have a nice black border, um, choose that option. Um, however, let's go back into objects components. Uh, I think I prefer, uh, there's a better way to do this. Uh, it's called tile, right? Um, upload a tile, we're just gonna do one. So right click out of that. Uh, and you've got a few more options, actually, um, because these are things that, you know, for things like Carcassonne tiles, tiling games, hexes, you know, and Catan, things like that. Um, you have a bunch of different shapes you can do, but for our board, we're just going to do a regular box. Um, and for the top image, I'm just going to uh, get that file that we had before, cloud upload. <clears throat> uh, I don't need to fill in the bottom image because uh, it's just one image, so it'll just actually copy the top to the bottom. Um, the thickness is fine, default is okay. Um, I don't need to stack them. Uh, and we're gonna stretch it to whatever the aspect ratio of the image I uploaded is, right? Otherwise, it'll just try to fit it into like a box. All right, so let's import that tile. All right, fantastic, well, there it is. Look how small that is. <laughs> Completely unplayable. Uh, but we could very easily size that up. Um, if you right click on an object in TTS, uh, it'll bring up this menu here, right? Uh, and what you're looking for is the scale. You can scale up or down. You can see that getting bigger, right? Uh, but boy, this is slow. Uh, there's a shortcut here. Uh, hover your mouse over it and just press the plus key on your keyboard. And that'll blow it up um, automatically, OK? Plus and minus are hotkeys for uh, making things larger and smaller. OK, fantastic. So we've got this big, nice tile here. It's a little huge, so I'm going to just scale that down. Um, and you can see there is no border around it. It is just as it is. Uh, and we can manipulate it like that. Uh, now, when you upload a board, it's automatically locked uh, to the table. You can't pick it up and move it, right? If I click and drag, it's just going to highlight a bunch of things. Um, unlock it. Click, toggle, lock. 
right? Now you can move it around and you can even delete it, which is what we're gonna do. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, so now you've got your tile here, which is your board. Um, and if you wanna lock this, right click, toggle lock. Uh, shortcut for that one, the letter L, right? Hover your mouse over, click L, now it's locked completely, okay? Um, I prefer this for a board uh, for two reasons. One, you don't have that extra thickness around the sides, uh, so you can kind of control your spacing. Uh, or um, the other thing is uh, you can also alt-zoom on this. Alt-zoom is a special function where uh, it's going to bring up an object in the game right up to your screen, so you don't have to zoom in manually to do it. So I'm going to hold the alt key over this and boom look at that nice big and beautiful on my screen see all the details it goes away fantastic um <clears throat> so uh that's a nice feature of tile so when you up the board you might want to consider tile to do that uh it's just a little bit uh, let's put in some pieces so we're going to go back to custom um, and uh, we have a couple of tokens for this game that I've made here. Um, we have player pieces, and then we have sort of resource tokens, which are going to be uh, fish, uh, which I uh, made on Google Drawings. Um, so we're going to upload these as tokens. <clears throat> so we're going to do fish first. So I'm going to clone a bunch of fish because we need a lot of them. So let's say I'm going to clone that many fish. All right, let's find our image. So let's do a blue fish here. Select. Remember to cloud upload that there perfect uh we're gonna do default thickness um we don't need them to stand up and we really don't need them to be stacked so uh, i'm gonna say import and now it says we found five matching objects those are the ones we found. so we'll say update those as well and boom see we have a nice big pile of fish right there. um <clears throat> now these fish might be a little too big for some players uh and a little let's see it looks like they all imported locked which is pretty annoying uh, but remember that L hot key. Uh, that's going to help you unlock things really quickly. Um, so these are pretty big. Let's highlight the whole group and make them smaller. So we're just going to highlight the whole group, click and drag, and then just press the minus key. All right, that's a good size. Great. Uh, so we've uploaded some fish. Uh, let's upload some player pieces. Um, so go back to objects, components, custom. Uh, now player pieces, you've got a couple options for this as well, uh, just like the boards. Uh, let's do a figurine. All right. So a nice figurine here is going to have like a little base and then a card up top. Um, so let's choose a, uh, let's do the cat. We'll upload the cat one. <laughs> All right. Uh, card scale. Uh, that's where it's going to leave that as one and see what happens. All right. It's going to load in and that image should change to a cat. Let's see what happens. Might take a minute. Um, while that's loading, um, and maybe there is a uh, an issue here, uh, but we'll get that sorted. Um, let's do the other one as a token, okay? So we're gonna upload the same file as a token. Hopefully they'll both show up at the same time. Uh, all right, so let's go back to that cat, upload, cloud, obviously. Um, now, um, remember we uploaded the fish as a token. Uh, they just laid down, right? They don't need to stand up. They're just fish, they're resources in a pile. But a player token, you want that to stand up. So we're going to check this box here so that we get that to stand up. Perfect. All right. So one thing you might notice right away about TTS is uh, it's a little finicky, right? Um, I'm having a little issue uploading some stuff here. Um, so let's try this a different way. Now, I've already told you to cloud upload, uh, but for my purposes, I am just going to locally upload. Hopefully, that's faster. There we go, perfect, all right. I'm gonna local upload from now on. That seems to work better for me while I'm simultaneously streaming. Um, all right, let's do this one as well. Uh, but now you can kind of see what it looks like here. So you upload the cat as a, uh, as a figure and as a token. Um, don't worry about the size, you know, use plus or minus to change that. Uh, but there's a couple things about these that you need to know. The figurine's gonna have this base on it. Uh, if you make it bigger or smaller, it's gonna um, make the whole figure bigger or smaller. If you want that um, the cat image to be a little bit bigger, all you gotta do is change that card scale, right? It's one, let's change that to a 1.5, okay? Boom, now you've seen it, the image is bigger, but the base is the same. Um, the token here, uh, that is pretty thin, if you look at that one, the standing up one. 
um, if I try to move it onto a spot, uh, it's likely just going to fall over. I'm having a little trouble grabbing it. I apologize for the technical difficulty. That's probably my computer. But um, let me show you how to fix this here. Um, we've got a thin thing here. Uh, if we try to move it, like I said, this is a physics engine, so it's just going to top right over. We're going to need to make that a lot thicker. So we're going to drag that over, and it's going to look, look more like a typical hobby piece. All right, awesome. I think that is perfect. So now it's not going to fall over very easily. Uh, now these images um, I made myself. I basically took some hobby pieces, took pictures of them, and then used the photo editing software to like you know crop that out. Um, with a transparency background. When you upload a token or a figure, uh, it's going to cut around um, that transparent background. And you're going to get that custom shape. So it's a really cool way to get custom shapes into TTS uh, without the need for modeling or anything like that. Um, a couple differences between these two options here. Uh, if I swing around here, you can see that the, uh, the meeple looking guy, um, he reversed the image, right? It's, it's one whole image. But if you look, um, it's pointing to the right, it's facing to the right, and if I move it over, it's still facing to the right. Kind of one of those like optical illusions, right? Um, that's the sort of thing with a figure is that no matter where you're looking at it, you're looking at it from a straight on view, right? Whereas this, you can sort of manipulate around. Okay, so it all depends on what your purposes are um, for what's best. I like this one because it looks more like a tabletop. Um, it's a little chunkier, which is... Um, so that's uh, importing figures. Let's import some dice. This game needs some dice. Um, <clears throat> now, your um, TTS comes with a custom die template. Um, the way to get to that, and I'm not going to be able to share my screen for this moment, so just uh, pay attention to what I'm saying here. You're going to go into Steam, right, where you loaded up Tabletop Simulator. Uh, in the library window of Steam, uh, you're going to find your copy of Tabletop Simulator, and you're going to right-click on it, okay? Um, there are a few options that come up. One of them is Manage, and you're going to go to Browse Local Files, okay? Browsing your local files will bring up where Tabletop Simulator is stored in your computer. Um, you're going to navigate to that modding folder, which is right in there. Um, the modding folder brings up... Uh, options for uh, custom dice uh, and custom decks. Um, the dice template is just a simple picture. And actually, I'm going to show you in TTS uh, kind of what that looks like. I'll upload it as a tile so you can see that image. Um, let's do local here. Uh, so your custom uh, die image is going to look like this. Uh, it's going to have numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 on it. Oops, that got way too big. <laughs> All right, what is going on here? Um, let's delete that. Let's try that one more time. Like I said, it's a physics simulator, and sometimes it's uh, it's a little hard to control here. Let's do that one more time, um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So I'm uploading this as a tile, not as a die. So you're just going to see the actual image. Um, OK, so this is a good uh, reason to use <laughs> All right, so you're going to have this image here. That's what it's going to look like in that folder, uh, except it's going to have numbers. Now, I've erased the numbers, and I've put these on top. OK, so this is what my image is going to look like when I upload it. So let's upload that image as a custom die. Fantastic. All right, so now you have a few options. D4 all the way up to D20. It's a D6, pretty standard. Uh, so I'll choose that file and say import. And then now we can see what that, that looks like, what that translates into. So that image that I uploaded here will look like this. So you've got the different die faces. Uh, you can roll it, you can spin it, and all that good stuff. Uh, so it's really easy to make custom dice in here. All you need is a photo image manipulation system like um, you know Google Drawings or Photoshop or whatever. Um, and like I said, those files can be found in that modding folder. Um, you'll have uh, templates for D20s, D4s, and all that good stuff. All right, cool. Uh, so that's uploading, uh, uploading dice. Uploading decks. Um, this is a little bit trickier uh, in tabletop sim. 
Um, so I'm going to see if I can uh, switch my uh, stream into my desktop, because I really want you guys to see this here. Um, So hopefully you can all see this. Um, so now I'm in Steam here. Uh, like I said before, right click, manage, uh, and browse local files. Okay. This is going to pull up that folder I was talking about. And you've got the modding there, so we'll click on that. And then um, you've got the dice templates. Hopefully you all can see this. I'm checking the chat to see. All right, cool. All right, great. Looks like you all can see that. Wonderful. Okay, so these are the die templates I was talking about, right? Load this up into your uh, photo editing program, and you're all good. Um, so let's go back to modding, and let's talk about uh, deck building. So it has a deck builder program in here. Um, you don't want to upload your deck one card at a time, right? You want to do it in a batch. Um, so you're going to double-click on here, open this editor. Um, you can upload up to 69 cards at a time. If you have a deck that's more than that, don't worry, you're just gonna upload two different decks and just combine them into, your, into the size that you want. Cool. Um, let's let that open. Um, this is uh, the point while this opens, I'm gonna talk a little bit about data merge. Uh, if you're a designer and you're making stuff online, uh, you're doing your digital prototype, you're gonna to wanna to learn how to data merge. And all that means is that um, you're gonna take a, a spreadsheet of data that's gonna be like all your cards, uh, and you're going to use a program to turn that into a um, into card images, right, a template. That's a really easy way to get um, images of your cards all at once. Uh, I use Nondeck or Card Maker by Tim Stair, but there are others. You can use InDesign or Paperize.io. Um, all those are fine options, uh, but we're not going to go over how to use those. Um, but just as a recommendation, you might want to look into that. Okay, so we've got the deck editor up. Perfect. Uh, so we're going to say new deck. We're going to leave this deck size alone. 10 by 7 is fine. That's going to create a template of 70 cards. Um, so we'll go to File, Add Cards. Okay. This program is gonna put our cards into an image that TTS is gonna understand. So um, let's go to, uh, I've got some designs here uh, ready to go. Uh, let's upload this one. Uh, this is from a game I'm working on, New Atlantis Construction Company. Uh, and you can see I've already made uh, all the individual card images using a data merge program. Um, so, uh, I want to get all of these cards into one deck, batch uploaded into TTS. So I'm going to add all these cards to the TTS deck editor. All right, perfect. And now you see them all up. Um, you can see the limit of 70 there. Um, don't worry about that last spot that you really can only upload 69 uh, at a time. That last spot is sort of unused. Um, so we've got our cards here. Uh, now we're going to want to export them as a single image. and here is the most important part of this entire presentation. If you take one thing away, it is this. Make sure that this max deck size box is checked, okay? Uh, the default, for whatever reason, is to have it unchecked, all right? So make sure this box is checked. Uh, that's going to change your final deck size to a workable image. Um, if it's not checked and you export it like this and try to upload it, Tabletop Simulator will crash every time. Uh, so make sure this is checked. All right, so we're going to export this. Uh, let's export this into our uh, folder here. Uh, let's give it a name, demo, and save. Okay. Uh, so now it should be in there. So let's go back to TT. All right, so we are going to upload that deck here. So let's go to compile. We're going to go to custom again, and we are going to go. All right, perfect. So we'll spawn one copy of that. Now, your custom deck's going to have a few different uh, types for you to choose from. If they're all just, you know, rectangular cards or whatever, 
that's fine. Just uh, leave it how it is. That's the default. But you can also make hexes and circles out of these. Um, for the face, this is the thing we just made, right? That demo file. Uh, so we're going to upload that demo. And remember to do cloud. I'm just doing local right now for this. Um, now, does your uh, do your cards have unique backs? Uh, are all the backs different? Uh, if they are, check this box. If it's a typical demo of cards, uh, then you'll want to find one single image that can act as the back for all of them. Um, for the cards we uploaded, uh, they are just uh, the same back to front. There is no special back to them. So we're just going to upload that same file again. And we're going to say unique. Okay, width and height, that's the default, right? The 10 by 7 we made, so we'll just leave those how it is. The number refers to the number of cards in your deck. Uh, and I know we have 33 in there, so I'm just going to move this slider over to 33. Um, don't worry about these two right now. Sideways back in hand. I'm going to show this. So. There we go. Uh, we've got our deck. Uh, as you can see here, uh, if we flip that over, um, backs are the same as the fronts, right? These cards are both the same. Uh, fantastic. All right. Um, now, a uh, couple of things about this. Um, with cards, uh, you can right click and deal them to certain players. Um, you can deal them to all seated players if you just click on that. Or you can deal to everybody, even if they're not seated, or very specific uh, player colors, right? Um, you could also split the deck into multiple stacks, right? Do you want two even stacks, three even stacks, four even stacks? Uh, click on that, and boom, it separates it for you. You don't have to count it out. There's a lot of cool deck options here. Um, to shuffle a deck, uh, all you're going to do is click that R button. That's a hotkey for you. Uh, that will shuffle deck, uh, bags of things. Um, and uh, it will also roll dice uh, if you just hit that R, R key. Um, OK. Um, so now we've uploaded uh, Fantastic. I'm going to show you something uh, that's going to trip people up uh, a lot. Uh, and it's what happens when you make a sideways card. Um, let's import another deck in here. Now, I've got a, uh, a deck image already created. Right? It's called landscape cards. Uh, these are cards that be sideways for you. Um, now I'm going to upload these. Uh, and I will just do the same on the back as well to make it simple. Uh, and I believe there's just uh, six of those. OK. Now, your instinct <laughs> when you upload cards that are landscape is to click the sideways button, right? Totally makes sense. Sideways. My card sideways, I got to click that button. People do this all the time. Uh, and it is not the right thing to do. <laughs> Uh, and I'll show you, uh, when I hit Alt uh, on one of these cards, right, these portrait cards uh, that I've got, show me uh, the card as is, and I can read it perfectly. Um, I uploaded these cards they're sideways, right? If I hit Alt, now I've got a portrait view, right? Now this is turned around. Uh, now, thankfully, these are just symbols, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if these were text on them, they'd all be sideways. Turn my head to read it, right? Um, the problem with this is uh, is that sideways button, right? So if you uncheck that and redo it, re-import it, uh, boom, now they're the correct alt view. Uh, this is important because people are going to very frequently not want to uh, you know, zoom into your card to read it. They're just going to have a bird's eye view of the whole place, hover their mouse over hit alt, and just get a real quick read of whatever that text is. Uh, so make sure you don't click that sideways button. Uh, the TTS deck import is smart enough to recognize um, how your cards are oriented based on that uh, program that we saw um, and how they appear in there. OK. Um, cool. I see the chat is going great. Um, just to let you know, I will take questions at the end. I will definitely leave some time for that. Um, and I've got a guy who's, uh, <laughs> who's taking down all the questions, which is great. Uh, and they'll let me know uh, what we've got here. OK. Uh, so cards. So hopefully that's uh, you kind of get the idea of like how cards work um, uh, and how to upload them into your system here. Um, what else? We talked about dice already. Um, these last three model asset bundle custom. Not going to worry about those. Those are sort of advanced stuff. Um, like I said, this is a very, very basic. Uh... Okay. So now we've got uh, our custom game in here. 
let's talk about some of the stuff we can do uh, with the game. Uh, and I'm going to upload uh, one game I've already made uh, on here to show you uh, some stuff that uh, can be done with TTS. That's really cool. Um, okay, so this game is a New Atlantis Construction Company. It's a prototype of mine. It's the cars that you use. Uh, now there's a lot going on here, right? Um, you've seen these giant colored cubes. Um, you see the board here, a lot of cards. Um, let's take a game master view of the whole area. Okay, cool. So now we can see everything, right? Those uh, giant uh, colored boxes, those are zones in TTS, okay? Uh, on the left side, we're going to start talking about this, this uh, menu of options here, okay? Uh, and the first one we're going to talk about are zones. Um, there are a few different types of zones. Uh, the one you might use most often uh, are uh, hidden zones and hands, okay? Uh, let's go to hands. You can see when I click on it, it's going to display all the hands that are in the game, right? Uh, I have six players here, uh, and so I have six hands. That's these colored boxes, okay? Um, you'll notice that when I sit down in one of the seats, uh, my name appears where the hand zone is, okay? This is a double function of hands. Uh, <laughs> uh, it will, uh, whoever sits there, it will put their name right where that is. Um, uh, with hands, you can draw cards, right, uh, into your hand. And now to everyone else, uh, these will be secret by default. No one's going to know what these are, but you will. Um, and there's ways to actually manipulate that uh, and how that looks. And we're going to go do that right now. Uh, if you go to options here and you go to hands, um, first of all, you can just disable hands altogether. Um, no one has hands, right? <laughs> but for this game, let's say we want hands. Um, here's how you kind of change what other people see while you have them in your hand. Uh, the default is any standard card game. Only you can see your hands. Reverse, this is like Hanabi, right? You can't see your cards anymore, but everyone else can. Uh, you can also just disable them um, so that uh, objects and hands are not hidden, right? So maybe a cooperative game where you can see every other player's cards, um, something like that. So that's how to manipulate how hands show up. Um, you can see TTS nicely sort of hides your hand until you need it, uh, until you go down there. Um, to get rid of this sort of like um, second screen for your hands, just hit the H key, goes away, uh, and now you're free to move around without that sort of getting in the way of you clicking and dragging things. Uh, bring it back, just hit that H key again. Okay. All right, let's put those back. So, um, so that is a hand zone. Now, with hand zones, you can create uh, more zones, right? Let's say I wanted a seventh player. Well, I'll just click on that hands uh, zone tool, click and drag, make this nice box. Uh, and let's make it a different color that isn't already there. Uh, let's say orange. Orange is not there. Cool. Uh, so now, if I want to change color, look at that. I can take the orange player seat. Um, you'll notice one thing real quick about this. Uh, it really depends on what your camera view is when you make the hands uh, where your hands appear. So even though uh, that is a sort of a rectangle that looks like all the others, it's oriented that way. When I made this, uh, I was viewing it from this angle, right? So that is where the player is going to go. If I wanted to make this properly, let's left click on that and get rid of it. I'll drag my view over and I'll make that again, right? It's a little off center, but with some practice, you'll, you'll be able to get it. Now, if I sit there, uh, you can see my views over here. And if I hit spacebar to reset my view, now I'm looking at the table uh, from my vantage point. And if I take cards into here, now they're looking at me, not at <laughs> other people. All right. Uh, so that is hands. And you want to get rid of them? Just simply click on them. That's how all zones work. Uh, click, drag, click to get rid of them. Um, hidden zones are different. Uh, you can create hidden zones wherever you want uh, and as many as you want. Um, you can see that each player here right now has a hidden zone. Uh, because I don't want people to see uh, tokens that they have, right? They're secret. Um, right, the color refers to what player can see them, right? So the blue player can see that, the yellow player can see that. If you needed to change it for whatever reason, just right-click uh, and make the new color of whatever it is. Um, uh, hidden zones are pretty simple, and they're very useful um, for certain games here. All right, fantastic. So now I'm sitting in the pink seat, and I can see all of pink stuff, but I cannot see anyone else's, right? All right. Um, 
what else do we have here? Um, so that's zones. Um, there's other stuff here, like Fog of War, if you had a game that you know slowly revealed itself. It's a little bit advanced, so we're not going to go over that right now. Um, uh, ooh, the line tool, yeah. So this is just going to uh, measure stuff for you if you want to measure the distance between objects for like you know a miniatures game or X-Wing or something like that. Uh, you can do that there. There is a sort of shortcut, uh, which is really useful when you're teaching games. Uh, and that is tab. On your uh, keyboard, if you hit tab just once, uh, it's going to make this little arrow and make a little ping sound. That shows everybody that, hey, hey pay attention to this, right? Um, if you hold tab and drag your mouse, uh, now you're going to bring up that line tool, uh, which is really nice for connecting things uh, to people. Like, say I want to um, say, hey, everyone, look, my piece is over here, right? I'm connected to that. Uh, you can use that line tool to do that. Little shortcut. Uh, flicking, if you have a dexterity game in TTS, uh, this is your best friend. Uh, you can flick all kinds of objects uh, just by clicking and dragging on them. Um, combine. Um, this tool here uh, will allow you to combine two different objects uh, together, right? So let's say uh, these two tokens, uh, they're always going to be together side by side. Uh, and if I move one, I want to move the other one as well. Uh, click on that attach tool, click on the object you want to attach, and drag it over to the object you want to attach it to, and let go. Now when I click on it, they're both together, right? You see that there? Um, to get rid of that attachment, uh, click on the object and drag to nothing. <laughs> All right, and that detaches them. All right, pretty easy there. Uh, the text tool, you're going to click, you're going to type whatever you want. Uh, and and that's where it is. If you want to get rid of it, uh, just hover over that trash icon. It goes away. You can change the color and the size of all that. The one annoying thing you cannot do with text is move it. Um, I cannot move this text even if I was in the text tool. Uh, so if you need to, you know, I'm frequently clicking, then trashing, then clicking again just to get it in the right spot. Uh, it's kind of annoying. Uh, one of the annoying things about here. Uh, okay, decal. Now, depending on what your game design is uh, and your processes, decal might be your best friend. Um, you can see these tokens I have here, right? These are just simply pink circles that I've uploaded as tokens, like we did before with the fish, right? Um, the numbers I got on them, uh, I could have uploaded this as like a tile or something um, and made it a circle with the number printed on it, and that's great. But I'm still fiddling around with the number values for these uh, different tokens. And I don't want to have to upload a brand new one every single time I want to change this from a one to a two, right? So what I've done here is I've made some decals. These are basically just stamps uh, that you can upload. Uh, so if you click on the decal tool and click plus, um, you can upload um, a new decal, right? And I've up already uploaded all of these. Um, you get to name it if you want, and it'll show up here as the name uh, and the size as well. Um, decals are really easy to use. Let's say I wanted to change this one to a two. Um, all I do, click on that two, have it selected. You can see a little shadow of the preview come up. Um, and I can get rid of this one by clicking on it, and then boom, now that one's a two. And I didn't have to spend uh, 20 minutes trying to change it in my photo editing program, uploading it to TDS, and all that good stuff. Uh, simply just stamping it. It's, it's a total time saver. Really useful when you're iterating on your prototype. Um, OK, uh, so that's decals. Um, uh, and then snap points. Um, for most of you, I think snap points are going to be your best friend <laughs> when you make something in TTS. Um, like I talked about before, it's a physics engine, right? It's going to move around a lot. Pieces are going to move just like they would in the real world for the most part. Uh, but sometimes you want pieces exactly where they need to be, right? So in this case, um, you can see this board has sort of uh, uh, shadow uh, boxes for the cards, and they all go there. What I've done is I've made some sticky points all over this board so that people are not going to get uh, confused or put their tokens in the wrong place, right? Um, so you see when I grab this card, um, I'm going to put it right here, and a little preview comes up of where it's actually going to land, uh, which is really nice. So even though I didn't put it exactly center, sticky points uh, are going to do that for you. Um, I've also created a sticky point uh, where the token is. Uh, so in this game, tokens go in the center here. Um, and this sticky point is super duper useful. 
uh, because of an uh, important I, fact there. I don't want these tokens to stack like poker chips. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, a stack of things in TTS is like a deck, right? Let's just make a bunch of poker chips here. Um, now this stack uh, is one object, right? I can pick it up and I can move it around just like a deck of cards. Um, but my tokens, uh, I don't want them to function like that. Um, I want them to be able to be lifted up at different points uh, and manipulated that way. Um, the downside is you can't tell how many are in here. Uh, unlike with stacks of things, it tells you exactly how many are in here, right? I've got 25 cards left in this deck, and I've got, I think, five uh, poker chips on this stack, right? So a sticky point here is really useful. Without that, if I took that away, uh, and just started trying to stack on here. It's sort of like a mind game of like, ah, you know, nudging it in the right area. Um, but with the sticky point, it does it puts that all there right, right for you. Um, super duper useful. A um, couple things about sticky points, um, or rather snap points. I think I've been calling them sticky points this whole time. Um, you can create a, a snap point anywhere, right? I can create them all over here. Um, but let's say um, I wanted it to be in the center of the card, right? So I want this card to be here, and I want it to stick in this position every single time, okay? When you click a, when you use a snap point uh, and you click on an object, the snap point will be at the center of that object, right? You see that it appeared there. Even though I clicked up here, boom, it's right there. So every time I go to put it there, it is now centered exactly. Um, so you don't have to be so precise. Just put the object where you want it, and then hit that snap point. Boom, there it is. Um, there's two types of snaps, uh, regular snap and rotate snap. Uh, all rotate snap does is uh, orient the card uh, in whatever that arrow is oriented. So in this case, it's oriented uh, up down. And I can change that by hitting the arrows left and right here. So if I uh, snap that again, now it automatically rotates it, right? Um, which I don't want. <laughs> I want a regular snap point. Um, so snap points are really helpful for uh, orienting your cards uh, and objects and snapping things to a grid. If there's a score tracker or something like that, you can uh, uh, do snap points there. Um, okay, um, let's see, what else we got? There's only 20 minutes left in the presentation, so, and I do want to leave time for questions. Uh, let me make sure I got through everything I wanted to. Okay, um, one big thing here. Um, creating your own objects is awesome. Uh, but you don't have to do it all the time. Uh, the workshop in TTS is super useful. People have created uh, prototyping kits and you know, uh, tables full of meeples for you to just steal. <laughs> and if you find, if you want a Catan road, just open up a, a instance of Catan and just save that object. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, the workshop here. One of the most common questions I get about TTS is, uh, how do I upload my prototype to the workshop so people can play it? You don't need to do that. <laughs> You'd never need to do that. Um, the only reason to upload something to the workshop is if you were gonna pass it to someone uh, to like blind play test or play without you, right? Um, if, they're gonna, if you're gonna be there, uh, it does not need to be in the workshop at all. Um, so I wouldn't worry about uploading it until you, uh, you wanna pass it off to someone to blind play test. Um, uh, but the workshop, uh, has a lot of useful stuff for designers as far as prototyping kits. Um, if you want to search for stuff like, oh, I need uh, ships, right? I'm looking for ship meeples. Uh, click on that browse. It'll open the in-game browser here, um, and it should uh, you should be able to search. I don't know why it's not doing it now. That's kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, you should be able to search the workshop um, for that kind of stuff. You'll subscribe to it. Uh, and that'll add it to your window here. You see all the stuff that I've had, uh, I've subscribed to. Uh, and I apologize, this is not loading. Um, oh, it might be right now. This is this is important to show you. Okay, perfect, there it is. <clears throat> so um, you'll scroll to the game you want. Um, let's say, let's say we just want to do, uh, I'm just going to pick a random one. Indoor assets. Look, this person made some indoor assets, maybe for like an RPG or something, uh, some terrain. Uh, maybe you want to use it for your board game. Um, 
You'll click on that, it'll bring up its window. And what you wanna do is scroll down here and click the subscribe button. Okay, perfect, now I'm subscribed. So now if I go back to my workshop, you'll see it's, boom, it's already loaded there. Um, and this person has made all kinds of assets for you, uh, for your game. Uh, now you can uh, click it and load it um, and have that uh, loaded up. Let's upload this one, Meeple Orama, right? This person's made a bunch of meeples for you to use, custom shapes and all that good stuff. Um, uh, which is really cool. Uh, but how do you get them into you? Um, well, one option you can do is you can right click and you can save the object you want to take. Uh, give it a name, uh, building, uh, then save it. All right. Uh, now you can go back to your other game and let's load up uh, the demo table here. Uh, and you're going to go to objects, saved objects. Uh, and you can see a building, which I definitely misspelled. <laughs> uh, but then you can uh, stamp tool it into your uh, into your uh, into your game. Uh, one easier way to do this uh, is to go to your workshop, go to that thing you want. Let's go to Meeple Rama, and you go to Options. Uh, go to Expand, and that will uh, display all of the objects that are in the game uh, that are in this mod, right? So if I wanted anything else, I don't have to load it. I just have to expand it. And boom, now I've got this cool vehicle, and I've never left my prototype. Really useful. Um, so I recommend uh, finding some workshop items uh, that you might need. Uh, just subscribe to them, and it kind of bookmarks them for you here. Uh, one really useful one that I'll recommend just off the bat is this uh, CGS prototyping kit. Uh, you can search for this on the workshop. Um, it has this bag here of objects that you could use. Uh, but the really nice thing is this table. Um, this is sort of a custom resizable table, uh, which is really nice. When you start making stuff in TTS, you're gonna realize some of their table options are a little small. Um, so you'll want to uh, maybe make something custom. So you could uh, update these values, apply the scale and boom, now you've got this perfectly sized table for your uh, unique game. Okay, um, let's go back to demo. Uh, but that's the workshop. Uh, if you do end up wanting to upload to the workshop, it is pretty easy. Um, you just go to modding, workshop, upload, and then upload everything you need to do right there. Uh, and then you can share that with people. Uh, wow, we're running out of time. <laughs> uh, I do really want to uh, leave rooms for questions, but that is basically um, most of what you need to know for uploading uh, custom content into TTS. Uh, I've made a ton of prototypes in this. It's really... Um, there is a learning curve, but hopefully this gets you over that first wall um, and it becomes sort of a playground for you. Um, so um, I think I'm going to take it to questions. Um, Mickey's got, I know, is uh, keeping a monitor of the chat. So uh, go ahead, uh, hit me with any questions that uh, I haven't addressed already. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's see. I've got one here from QT Games. Regarding the front of the cards, it sounds like they won't be able to include a picture or pleasant formatting uh, if we're supposed to use a spreadsheet. Can we just import images for the entire card instead? Um, can you import images? To, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I might not be following what you're asking. Um, you can certainly import just single cards if you want. So in custom, uh, you could just make one card. Right, and it's going to ask you just for the face and the back of it. Um, so pretty simple, if that's what you're asking. Um, if you're talking about changing the faces of cards, uh, then you're going to want to do that through decals. Um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't quite understand uh, the nuances of it, but I hope that I hope that helps. Okay, yeah, and if they write anything else in there to clarify the question, I'll let you know. In the meantime, okay. uh, uh, one of the questions that we had was uh, from Mangozoid. They want to know, uh, can we chase you up afterward and get some solid hand-holding advice at another time after Metatopia is over? Absolutely, 100%. If, uh, if you still have questions after this or, 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 or comments or you want, literally you want me to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with you, uh, hit me up on Twitter, uh, at MikeBelsel3 uh, is my Twitter handle. Um, 
uh, reach out to me, DM, reply, whatever you want. Uh, and yeah, we'll schedule time. You know, I'll hang out with you for an hour. We'll go through your prototype. You know, you want to make spinners, I can help you with that. Uh, if you want to do some uh, weird custom stuff, I can try to help you with that. Uh, and I do know a little bit of scripting. Uh, it's very basic, but if you want, like, you know, auto randomized decks or bags or things like that, yeah, I can absolutely help you with that. Yeah, hit me up on Twitter. I I'm uh, I'm wide open. Okay, so QT Games has responded that you did, in fact, answer the question, so thank you. Um, and cool. uh, One of the neat things is that we've had a couple of people here in the audience who've been able to answer a couple of the other things that came up earlier. So Great job, everyone. Case, yeah, that being the case, I don't really have any outstanding questions, at least not that I've found. So if you're in the audience and uh, I've missed a question, would you go ahead and re-ask it? We've got about 10 minutes left uh, in the panel. So go ahead and throw some questions at us and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Yeah, uh, while we wait for questions, let me go over a couple of things uh, that TTS has built in that's gonna really help you. Um, uh, in the tools section of the components, right? Like where we're making custom stuff, components, tools. A couple of things here that's really uh, gonna be nice for your game. Um, one of those is bags. Um, so you've got infinite bags and you've got regular bags. <laughs> uh, as you can probably tell, um, let's throw in a couple of objects. I'm not going to make any custom ones because we're low on time. Uh, but let's throw in some blue squares and uh, or red squares and blue triangles. Um, uh, if you all wanted, uh, you know, to shuffle these up and put them in a bag that you're going to draw from, uh, go ahead and put it in here. Right? You've got a limited amount of resources, and people can only draw like one at a time. Um, a bag is perfect for something like that, holding a limited amount of resources, right? If you want something to um, spawn forever, right? You've got a resource that's unlimited. You never want players to run out. You're going to want this infinite bag. Um, how this works, you simply put one object in it, and boom, you can see that object is now in that bag, and every time you pull something out, it's going to be that object. Um, now, you can only do this for one type, right? If I try to put this uh, blue thing in there, it's not even going to work. It's going to fall right off. Uh, so infinite bags can hold uh, an infinite amount of one type of object. Um, bags can also be shuffled. Um, so if you want to randomize something like Quacks of Quedlinburg, um, you can do that as well with these. Uh, another useful tool uh, is going to be the note card. Uh, this is great for quick player aids. Um, if you right click on the note card, you can change its text. Uh, so header, and let's say, uh, hi. Um, the note card uh, changes to reflect that. I have a couple of games that have like player aids, but I didn't want to make a whole card for it. Um, so I just made note cards. It's quick and dirty, but really easy and useful to use. Uh, and players can alt view on that. Um, yeah. Um, what else? Ah, saving and loading. Uh, whoops, <laughs> I hit the blindfold for a second. Uh, saving a little. Let's say I want to save this prototype, right? I've just started making my awesome cube game with bags, uh, and I want to save it for later because I got to go to work. Um, you're going to go to games, save and load, and you'll hit save game, right? Demo two, right? Or let's call it awesome bag cube game. All right, cool. Let's save that. All right. Um, all right, now I'm coming back to work on it. I've opened it up. Uh, and I'm going to make some changes. Uh, I now found out through playtesting that uh, actually I want some green cubes uh, in there. So let's make some green cubes. Uh, right click, color tint, change that color, boom. Now I've got green cubes. Okay. Um, now let's say I playtested it and I really don't care about that last version um, and I just want to overwrite it. Uh, well, that's really simple uh, in TTS. You're just going to go to that save, uh, <clears throat> that save file here, go to options and overwrite. All right, that's going to change your awesome bag cube, uh, bag cube game. Uh, you can rename it if you want. Now with green cube, and overwrite it. Next time you load this game, it's going to have your second version there. Uh, so that's saving and loading. Overwriting is really nice. Keeps everything nice and neat. You don't have a million save files. Um, you could also create folders to do that. I've done that with some of these that have uh, more iterations in there. Um, so for this game here, um, yeah. Uh, that's saving and loading. We still got a few minutes. Any questions there? Uh, no, nobody has asked any new questions since the last time we uh, asked them to ask the questions. So uh, we've got about five minutes. If you want to go ahead and wrap up and 
and we'll uh, go from there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. So I'll wrap up with some uh, really small uh, sort of extra stuff here. Uh, this is the game prototype I've made here, and it had, does have some scripting in it. You can see that the deck cut itself uh, and uh, sort of laid out there for me. Uh, there's really cool stuff you can do with scripting. Uh, this button here is going to draw one from every pile and flip it face up. Um, so, uh, And this wasn't too hard if you know some coding. Um, if you don't, you might want to just steal it. Uh, in fact, I stole this button from another workshop mod uh, and just sort of uh, rewrote it for my purposes. Um, one thing, uh, let's see. Um, OK, so for this game, this actually has a lot in it that is a little, I would call it intermediate. Um, I've got these powers here that people are going to um, get throughout the game and then use, right? Uh, and this is a roll and write uh, game. And I don't have a, you know, you can draw uh, with TTS uh, on stuff, uh, but it's, you know, you're drawing with your mouse. So, you know, if you're trying to draw like a bird or an airplane, uh, it might not look so great unless you've got some nice art skills. I, I do not. Um, so what I've done for this roll and write, if, I, if I'd made a bunch of tokens, right? Uh, and these are all standard. These are all the different types of events you can go to in this game. Uh, so I've made tokens, and I'm just going to put them on. Really nice and clean way to do a roll and write uh, in TTS. Um, it's not always one to one, right? You know, you want to be able to, write, but um, <laughs> to do that in TTS is a little cumbersome. So you might have to find a clever workaround um, to, to problems like. That. Um, another thing with these rings here. Um, these rings sort of indicate uh, powers you've gained and used. And what I've done is I've made three separate rings and I've made them states so that I can change them instantly, right? So instead of having to like grab a draw tool and circle it, I can just hover over it, press two, and now it's in the second state, which is green. Um, kind of show you how that works. Let's reset this to used to be. Um, reset and, okay, great. So now these have no states, right? They're just rings. Uh, what you wanna do uh, is you wanna click on them. So you're gonna hold control, click on each one in the order of the state you want them to be. Then go back to that first one, right click and say, create states. Now that made all three of them into one object that you could switch between, right? One, two, and three. Uh, and you could do this with any object, really. Um, I can create a state of these two. So now these balloons can now be a meal, right? Uh, might be useful for some prototypes where you, uh, where you might need to do that. Um, and again, you could use it as a workaround for stuff. Um, I've seen people use this as like different versions of a prototype, right? So they've got like two boards they want to test, uh, but they don't necessarily want to import a new board every time or, or reload an entire new game. So they'll just make two boards, combine them with a state, and they'll test one, and then they'll test the other one. Something like that. Two minute warning. Great. Um, but I think that is uh, pretty much it as far as custom goes. There's a lot of stuff in TTS um, <clears throat> that is, you know, could be confusing or whatever. Um, TTS does have a nice help section. Uh, if you go to this uh, orange question mark in one of the menus, uh, that'll bring up uh, a Chrome window or, you know, browser window um, with their website to help explain uh, sort of more behind the object and more of what you can do with it that isn't obvious from the in-game menu. Um, so there is a nice resource there. Um, the tough thing about Tabletop Simulator is it does change all the time. So, you know, this tutorial will be outdated, um, you know, in a year or so, <laughs> possibly. Um, hopefully not, right? Hopefully they keep things sort of similar and ju they just get better. Uh, but it does change a lot. So you might want to, um, the next time you come into it after a long break, it might be a little bit different. Um, and there's that website for you. Um, okay, that's pretty much it. I think I'm done. Like I said, reach out to me on Twitter if you need uh, any extra help. Um, now that you know how to put your uh, game into TTS, uh, you want to know how to play test it. Uh, coming up next, uh, we've got a panel of people who uh, are going to teach you how to play test your game. Uh, and probably with this uh, era of all online play testing, that'll be a pretty interesting panel. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Uh, really appreciate it. I hope you came away with some good knowledge uh, and some good best practices. Um, like I said, reach out to me if you have any more questions. And thank you so much. Have a great rest of Meditation.